Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Fate Extra. So, since last time, uh, I've actually gone through and gotten a bit of knowledge, and also I have a couple of things I want to cover while we're going through this crap. So anyway, now we're beginning week two, and we get more monologue from this strange creature, ephemeral person thing. A journey without a destination, a voyage at sea with no map. What awaits after drifting, lost, is only a miserable death. It's actually pretty cryptic, I'm not gonna lie. And yet... Oh, we're just gonna speed this up a little bit, please. You draw sustenance from fit. Ye I hope so. <laughs> Memorize the pilgrimage of the stars. I'm getting pretty good at this narration thing. And land upon nameless shores. Uh. Okay, so like wandering journey. We start as novice navigators, but. Okay, now it's starting to mirror our journey a little bit. At least I think so. Rudderless boats never find the grail. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I'm pretty sure that cryptic line from the dude is uh, supposed to close the heads of what's happening. Anyway, so, beginning of the second week. If I'm correctly, uh, if I'm getting this correct, we should be... Yep, 64, alright. Also, I love all those, like, digitized uh, names in the background there. So, last time, we defeated Shinji. And also, I have a funny thing to share with you guys. So, I did some spelunking, and it turns out that, yes... Shinji really was eight years old. Uh, it's a similar thing to what's going to happen to Rin, although Rin's not a different age than what she really is. Uh, that's something different. Um, yeah, so our character, Hakuno's kind of racked with guilt. Um, and then I guess I blame him, really. He, he, he probably feels responsible for the murder of another, of another human being. But, you know, it's, it's fine, dude. Like, everyone knows what they sign up for when they go into this tournament. Well, I guess besides Shinji, because... Apparently the dipshit doesn't read the terms and conditions, but you know, that's not here or there. So anyway, uh, yeah, we're just kind of reminiscing about what's going on. Uh, my character, Hakuno goes through some accidental shit while the Holy Grail War is occurring. And I get not blame him, but eh, you gotta do what you gotta do at the, end of the, at the end of all this. It probably wouldn't be so hard if he didn't have to watch them die in front of his eyes. Like, whoever designed that aspect of the Holy Grail War, I know who did that, by the way. That's a bit of a, di a dickhead move, I'm not gonna lie. Yes, I, could, I can't quite put it into words, but after this fight, I do believe I like you a bit more. Oh, yes. God. Alright, so, first of all, we're gonna... I need to talk about something. Every single time during recording, I record this game on Wednesdays. Taylor comes home from school. And every time she come, she walks in, I get really awkward and quiet, and I feel like my commentary suffers because of it. So you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to... <laughs> this, this might make Taylor look at me weird. I'd, I'm i probably going to make her uncomfortable to some extent, but you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to gush over Nero and other characters when ne Taylor's in the room. Screw it. I can't really do anything otherwise, because apparently she is able to unlock the lock on my fucking bedroom door. So, yeah, I'm just got to deal with it. She's got to deal with it. When she gets home, I'm gonna sit her down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuck with her. <laughs> anyway, Saber swells with pride. I can't help laughing. <laughs> I mean, she speaks so confidently, even though it's something she herself is unsure of. I, I will give. Oh God, so I'm not 100% certain about the journey that your other servants go through with you, uh, on your progression through, uh, the Holy Grail War. But if it's anything like Nero's, it must be really good. Like, truthfully, this week, I was contemplating actually starting uh, another, another game with Archer. I just haven't had the time for it, because all of a sudden, hey, fake Randor is eating up my time again. Oh, gotta get that fucking Francis Drake. You know how it goes. But I can't allow myself to feel too much. I can't advance through the second round of on kindness. There's the old adage of you can kill people with kindness, but that's we're not going to quite delve into that one. So anyway, no more, no more of that weird bullshit of... No name appearing on the board on day one. We're getting right into it. The next combatants will be announced on the second floor bullets board. Things are getting into high gear now. I should hurry it to the second floor bullets board. Well, that'd be a good idea, Arkano. I'm just saying that'd be good. So anyway, uh, this week when I get to the church, I'm going to actually raise my strength to C. I'm going to raise defense defense D or something, and I'm going to start investing in probably agility. Maybe? Alright, so just as before, my name is listed on the bold sheets. My name is listed first. And then, Master Dan Blackmore. Hey, it's that dude I mentioned the last time, who I said, I wonder where we're going to fight him. We're, we're fighting him right now. 
and here's the funny thing. Dan Blackmore is actually a seasoned veteran of many wars, which is hilarious. So I've I've gone from Shinji, who is an eight-year-old little fuck, to basically a seasoned drill sergeant. This is gonna be we're we gone from a complacent child who doesn't know the full full like grapples of the war to a seasoned war hero. I would say that's a good improvement, if nothing else. Anyway, so another little gentleman is sitting next to me. His hair is pure white and his face weathered with the eight marks of aging. But though he's clearly aged, he doesn't seem the least bit frail. I have nothing but the utmost respect for Dan Blackmore, actually. He, personality-wise, he's a little lacking, but I... Okay, that's not necessarily true. He is actually a really chill guy, and you're green. Whatever you think you lack experience. Yes, I know, but you lack something else. That will become very evident in due time, so yeah, in your eyes. They are lost. <laughs> you are beyond hopeless. Entering the battlefield with Nazi will prove disastrous. See, you think that, but... I'm going to straight up tell you right now. Uh, the, the person that Dan was saddled with as his servant is going to really come to, cl come to odds uh, with him as things go forward. She doesn't mention how outclassed I am here. She probably believes like she can overcome my weakness. Well, so here's the thing. Uh, master servant relationships are only... What, what's the best way to describe this? So, if two servants are close to each other in terms of power, the, one, the servant that has a better bond with their master is probably going to win. And not just because the, uh, the whole cliche, you know, power, friendship, and all that malarkey. No, like, legitimately, they're able to strategize better, they have faith in each other more, they're able to take bigger risks at, without worrying. There really is, like, a lot of outside factors to play into, like, a good master-servant relationship. Dan, Dan has a very set-in-stone brick, brick-and-mortar way of doing things. And his servant, Robin Hood, isn't too keen on that. He has an archer as a servant. I know on the offset that might not sound like a lot, but I want you guys to think that archers usually have this ability called uh, independence, where they're able to move about freely without their master. Or they're not really able to move behind their master's backs, but like they're able to act autonomously in a, in a weird sort of way. So what that means essentially is that Dan's going to have some problems trying to wrangle uh, Robin Hood in the long run. That's not so much a spoiler, because you guys are going to see how that plays out pretty quickly. Oh, wait, what's this? Oh, it's probably telling me the first cyber keys uh, generated. Yep, primary cyber keys have been generated. Truthfully, if nothing's going to stop me, I can go get that right now. A trial, huh? Right, if I don't acquire both triggers, I won't be able to enter the battle. Yeah. <sighs> Excuse me. It appears a task has been announced. Yeah, I would... Mm, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I hope so by now. We have scattered further intelligence on it season night to improve our tactics from the first round. So, I've mentioned my disdain for the whole intelligence gathering thing of this game. Well, not really the intelligence gathering. What bothers me is that if you miss something, you're fucked. Well, not inherently fucked per se, because you can, like, out outpace them in stats. Ooh, sweet. But the issue with that comes in if you miss something, you can't go back for it. As permanently just like a, a gap in your information matrix. Like, oh, let me go. Let me go show you, uh, writers, uh, Drakes. So I, I, I know how to. Shinji is pretty easy to swindle. I'm not gonna deny that in the slightest. So this is not impossible. It's pretty easy to get all his shit because he's dumb and Rin Flout extorts information information twice, which is fantastic. Um. We won't have as much luck with that as we as with um, uh, Dan because he's a little more tight-lipped because obviously. So we're gonna get into some abstract ways of how that's gonna play out. Oh, by the way, I have some information on Toko. So Toko really is a character. She is a character that's in Maho. I never forget the fucking Maho show name. God damn it! it I had it last time. I just looked it up fucking two days ago. I don't remember the name. But basically, she really is the. I, I believe she is a blood-related blood sister of Aoko. So, here's the thing. I know very little of Garden of Sinners. Much to my dismay, I really want to watch Garden of Sinners. But I know even less about Maho. Because I've never watched it before. I don't even fucking know it. So, 
All I know is that Toko is a, is a sister of Alko. She appears in Garb Sinners. She's a pu apparently a puppet master. She might be evil. That's all I got. <laughs> as much as it bothers me that I, I usually like to provide really good commentary and insight for these characters, I have nothing for Toko. So, if my buddy Tahu watches this or someone watches this who is familiar with Titan Moon and the Natsuverse and the Maho series, I would love adequate information on Toko. But for right now, I have nothing. Anyway, so... Uh, no coffee, no tobacco, and I'm forced to spend days with a mouth-breathing imbecile. Mouth-breathing, okay. Alright. She's trying to do something... It's heavily implied throughout the game that Toko is trying to do this experiment to synthesize, like, a body of some kind. I'm not certain she's trying to create a, a body in the real world she can occupy because she might just be an AI or something. What does she mean by ditch this body, anyway? <laughs> Once Maga enters the Seraph, they can't leave until they get the Holy Grail. But I'm not a master, meaning that I'm pretty much trapped here unless I take drastic measures. Such as create as urge my self-doubt, self-destruct once my business in the Seraph is done. Yeah, so, um, I think she's trying to create, like, a physical version of herself in, in the real world and be able to go back to it, but... I mean, considering the state of the outside world, I'm not sure what she stands to gain from that. She's just a Twitch degenerate who showers what little emotion she has on her dolls. Uh-huh. But I would just let you know, guys, I'm not going to, like, I'm not going to begin each week with talking to Toko. Uh, in fact, I'm not going to talk to her every week because while talking to her is interesting because of the crap she says, and, and it's always interesting seeing the, the shit she spews with uh, fucking Alco right next to her, we unfortunately have better things to do. You guys are, are free to look it up as you see fit on your own time. I myself am not going to do that because I, I had to keep the shit moving, so yeah. Anyway, so what I'm going to do now is... Let's see. How much farther? C strength. Um, I'm going to keep that in defense. I'm going to raise agility to D rank. This is all I'm doing. Uh, f feasibly, I should be like level 12 in order to get these kinds of numbers. And I'm probably overdoing it a little bit in strength. But in my opinion, not really. Well... Alright, so if I'm going this route, I'll probably have A rank strength by like week 5. That might be a little bit high, but frankly, again, my whole goal right now is to be able to dodge as much fucking um, grinding as I possibly can. That's really the, the, the goal here. And with this, I'll definitely be able to dodge a lot of it. Strength rate increased, agility increased. Found to the same. That is a pretty good move, actually. <laughs> Superb tempering. I shall repay your fine efforts. Nah, it's weird how you ask me if I want to do another alteration, like implying that I would have multiple. You know what? I wonder if this game was originally designed to have multiple servants playable in one save file. Because there's no reason. Okay, so like if you grind one level and then you go level up, feasibly there should be no other reason for you to. Go, like, be asked if you want to do it again. So that might be a holdover, a mistranslation, or something else. I'm not sure. I, I think... I'm probably going down a rabbit hole a little too much here, but it, it's... It bears thinking about it. Anyway, so actually, there was another thing we was going to talk about. So I mentioned that Aoko here ha has appeared in many, many fucking uh, tight moon works. Like, we're talking... She's present here in the Fate series. She is a prominent character in Melty Blood. She's also a main character in the Maho series. However, apparently Toko is also as, almost as uh, proliferous. Like, she's obviously here in Fate. I mentioned that she has a presence of, in Garden of Sinners, which I think Garden of Sinners might be a sort of in the same universe as Melty Blood, but I, I don't think so. I think the trio is two different things. And she's, a main, she's one of the main characters in fucking Maho. These fucking bitches go everywhere. But I think I know why. So apparently back in like the late, like late, late, late 90s, um, the guy who makes the series, Nasu, I don't know his full name, unfortunately. Everything under the, that umbrella of all these series is called the Nasuverse, uh, for brevity's sake. But apparently the Maho series was one of his earliest works on a very old website he did. And now this is apparently before he did Melty Blood. And Melty Blood happened before Fate Stay Night, uh... The original visual novel. Just to give an idea of how lengthy this series can be. So anyway, enough of the character introductions. I'm going to go ahead and track Rin down. So yeah, also I've, I've made up my mind just be like, Hey, if Taylor comes home and she's in here, I'm going to fucking gush over Rin. I, 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 
uh, if it makes things awkward with her, I warned her. That's why I, I specifically have a door to say, D like, don't come in here, but okay. And anyway, I heard your opponent in the second round. He's a decorated soldier, although I believe he's retired now. So apparently he's also a sniper from a kingdom that is allied uh, with the Harway plutocracy. I think he might be a British soldier. Um, that's just speculation. Things like crawling over a mile or sniping an enemy commander are, are par for the course of them. Yes, but snipers are also innately not close combat fighters. They are meant to be long range. That's also an advantage I have. So if I close the distance, I'm good. Basically, if I, if I go up close to Saber and dodge like, any sort of sniping tactics, I'm fine. Get it? He's a completely different caliber than your first round opponent. I'm not 100% certain about that, actually. I'll explain why in a minute. Sheesh, your memories are pathetic. Uh, your memories haven't returned, and you're weak on top of that. I don't want to preach, but without memories, without your reason to fight, you're dead in the water. Mm, yeah. <laughs> the ratio of put down to advice is kind of wonky there. Yeah. So, yeah, well, considering the situation, my character has no memories. We're still a really weak ma ma um, ma guy, and we're fighting a decorated soldier. The, the, the stat, or, well, the stats too. But, like, the odds are definitely piled on top of us right now. So we have to really think this through in order to actually make it out alive. Also, there's a gradient color on uh, Rin's boots. I think I mentioned that she's wearing boots in the series. It, it's oddly hot. Like, thigh boots are... Aren't usually my thing, but damn, nice. Only soldiers fight slowly without obligation. For the rest, of, well, also mercenaries, but you know. You're not a strong willed person or a soldier, but now you should know that's a weakness. <laughs> you know, as someone who's a hardcore Metal Gear Solid uh, fan, um, the whole idea of soldiers without wills of their own is actually pretty no normal for me because I've played the shit out of Metal Gear Solid 3 and Peace Walker. Soldiers without borders, uh, out of heaven, yeah. You guys should totally look at Metal Gear Solid if you haven't already. It's a fantastic series. Anyway, even if you are got the no strongest Noble Phantasm out there, he'll still make quick work of you. Ah, unless your name's Gilgamesh. Because he has every Noble Phantasm ever. <laughs> I'm just saying, Ren. Also, I don't know if I mentioned this, but Gilgamesh is playable as a servant in uh, Fate Extra CCC. I don't know who the fuck made that choice, but that's a thing apparently. What's like if he's look for? I'm talking about Nola Fantasmas. Don't tell me you don't know. Oh yeah, it's like King Arthur's Excal Excalibur. Yeah, I don't quite have a five foot uh, blonde girl swinging her Excalibur around. I have s I have another five foot blonde woman who's swinging a sword around, but it's not Excalibur. <laughs> oh man, I have some discrepancies to talk about later with Arthur and uh, Nero, but we'll, we'll talk about it later. Nola Fantasma is a power that makes your servant a servant. <laughs> I'm gonna have a talk with Nero about that later. I do believe my questions rendered Rintosaka speechless. Ah, oh, excuse me. You don't have a noble phantasm? Uh. And you, you defeat Eldrock. Well, yeah, well, we purely just outmaneuvered him, and Shinji was a terrible master. And here I thought you relied on a really potent noble phantasm to conquer, to defeat Eldrock. Well, hmm. I love how Rin was able to just quickly put together that uh, Shinju's servant was Drake. I mean, it took no fucking... I mean, she was able to figure out. I was able to figure out before Hawkeye even registered it, but yeah. I might I might have to rethink my opinion on you. Yeah, especially because she thinks that we got by just because we had a really strong Noble Phantasm, but considering we made through the first round of the tournament without even a Noble Phantasm and we took, out, took down Drake, I would say that's warned for praise, yeah. I'm getting the feeling that something's very off about you. I mean, your memories didn't return after prelims, and you can't use Nola Phantasm either. More like Nero won't let me use it. Not until week five, I'm sad to say. You know, I said the thing really about having A rank strength by week five. No, fuck that. I need and I need A rank strength to take on uh, that master. That's gonna be a bitch. They're troublesome individually, you know that? Oh, trust me. Oh, I know. Maybe bug damage your personal data when you exit the deployment rooms. Eh, it's a it's a thing that might happen. I don't know. <clears throat> also, yeah, I know I'm spending more time on Rain's dialogue than usual, but that's because a lot of things that are happening right now are actually pretty important to the plot. Meanwhile, like, better keep using your servant and updating your alteration of the soul. Yeah. So again, the more we fight, uh, I mean AI, and the stronger we get, 
We're able to dump more of those points into gaining Nero's uh, power close to back where they originally were supposed to be. Supposed to be. Uh, yeah, typically Sabres are supposed to have A rank strength, A rank defense. And considering we. And that's enough to topple like Hercules. Typically speaking. Unless you're like. Well, S rank would help also. But like. Uh, so it's time to look over your matrix. Yep. And considering we popped in with a Sabre that's fucking E ranks, that goes to show how weak we were when the shit actually started. Like, it, it's... Yeah, no. It, it, got, it got pretty bad. Or it's, uh, kind of grim, to, be, to say the least. Anyway, so I'm pretty sure that we didn't need to talk to Rin, but I wanted to anyway because she's a really good catalyst for keeping the plot moving along. Or at least, like, she's, she's sort of like a really good gap between... My servant, myself, and the enemy servant, if, if that makes sense. Like, she's an excellent mill ground, I suppose. Eh, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it really fast. I'm not safe, but I want to go talk to Nero for a bit. Not because I like talking to Nero. I mean, I love talking to Nero, but, you know, that's besides the point. <clears throat> uh, cannot, uh, cannot simple luxuries be provided to enliven this dreadfully dreary environment? I mean, we got... We have the red drapes, we have the chandeliers. We're getting there, we're getting to babe, we're getting there. <laughs> a bath? I mean, I suppose so, why not? Anyway, so I'm realizing that that weird visual glitch is more prevalent on my TV than it actually is on the capture card. It's odd, but eh, whatever. Alright, so a couple more things I'm gonna go do before I jump into the arena, because naturally. Um... Let's see. Let's do, let's do, let's do. Okay, so I'm waiting for Tiger to spawn so I can actually take that challenge he usually gives out. Um, it's like nothing else is really going on right now. I talked to Sakura, I talked to Rin. Kota Mia had nothing interesting to say. Um, this is weird. Bob, wow, I kind of just say something odd. I, I, find it, I find it very strange how, um, uh, this is still a high school setting, and everyone's set, is still dressed like a high schooler. But then we have all the old people around here. It's just funny to me. Oh, hey. It's like we still have the trappings of the traditional high school setting in anime, but just for the, the sake of having, like, an archetype to look at. I don't know, it's just odd to me. It's the only man I've spoken to earlier, Dan, who was with his servant most more than likely by his side. There he is. I was learning the identity of our next opponent, though young, he, they did survive the first round. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I would not tolerate your acting solely on your gut feelings. Mm-hmm. My only goal is your death. <laughs> so, as you can see, as you can discern from that, Robin Hood is really just more focused on actually killing the opponent versus having an honorable duel. And this is going to come to odds heavily with Dan's philosophy. Like, very much so. I mentioned before that Danon is easily one of the more interesting characters in this game. Which is saying... Which is saying a bit, because... Fan Extra does have some pretty interesting characters on some really dumb ones. But this is still interesting. I do like this shit. No more acting on your own like the first round. Ah, I see there's already been some dissent between the two of them. And Robin Hood already has been taking some initiative. Winning battles is meaningless if we lose the war. Do you understand me? I will not tolerate your insubordination a second time. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love how Nero just pops up behind me. This pose we're striking around. This is hilarious. It seems that man agrees is our next point and it appears that he is more of a bully than a soldier. Uncle though he may be, he has emerged victorious from the first round. That being said, he might be more of a source of amusement than actual threat. <laughs> Nero, you and your musings are so fucking cute. I love it. Anyway, so yeah, as you can clearly see, there's some, despite Dan's uh, very uh, hardened style and very straightforwardness and his experience on a battlefield, he has a, he doesn't have a, a gun that is subordinate in every way, shape, or form and doesn't have feelings. He has a man for a weapon that acts on their own, thinks for themselves, and fights similarly, but almost entirely different. Anyway, so Master appears they have already entered the arena. We'll probably encounter them once aside, though. Yes. There's no need for haste, so take care of any of the business you have my half. I've already saved a second ago, so should be okay. This will be different from what we had before, say alert. Yeah, now we actually have to be cautious.